Yeah, how are you? Good, how you doing? Not too bad. Good, tell me what's going on. I'm just trying to get a couple of answers on motor vehicle questions. Okay, all right. So it looks like we got, uh, it's, it's a Ford Ranger, is that right? That is correct. All right, so tell me what's going on. I uh, just need to have uh, an opinion on fair pricing on materials and labor to do the repairs that I've described. All right, so the, the parts in question are going to be for the ball joints and the brakes. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And then also we look, it looks, looks like it's going to be the reader support panel. Is that right? That is also right. Okay. So that would be something that a body shop would need to take a look at. Um, I've never worked at a body shop, so I won't be able to help you with that. But I can give you a price for the ball joints and the brakes. Okay. Well, there's a, also a parking brake issue there and a steering control arm. All right. So the parking brake, as far as that goes, do we know what part needs to be replaced? I have no idea. This is generally uh, returned to me that something was amiss with the parking brake. Okay. All right. So in order to give you an, like an estimate, I would need to know what's wrong with the vehicle. Not, I was actually a service. I was, I was a technician for about 13 years and I was a service manager for a couple of years. Um, and in order for me to give you an estimate, I would need to know exactly what parts we're replacing because I can't estimate something, you know, if we don't know what part is bad. But um, what I can do is I can uh, certainly... Ball joints, the ball joints are going to be replaced. The brakes are going to be replaced. They say there's something uh, about a minor exhaust leak beyond the catalytic converters. And they talked about a parking brake and a control arm. Okay. And a previous mechanic indicated to me that the bushings in the steering column are shot, whereby the turn signal stem I've got to work manually instead of automatically. Okay. All right. Should we start with the ball joints? Uh, yeah. What's the number on the ball joints? All right. So let's take a look here. Um... Is this four wheel drive? Yes, it's four wheel drive. So I'm calling, it looks like my labor figure calls for anywhere from three hours to four hours just in labor alone for the ball joints. So to be safe, be on the safe side, I would say about four hours labor plus the parts. Okay, what's the part cost? Yeah. MSRP is ninety-two ninety-eight. Is that per or both? That's that's per ball joint. Ninety-two ninety-eight. Per. Okay. Rear brakes. All right. So are we gonna do the are we doing the calipers? Are we doing the just the pads? Are we doing pads and rotors? I think that uh, the pads, and then there was one rotor. I think it was bad. All right. Generally speaking, um, I would recommend <clears throat> that, you know, every time we do this in the shop, we always do the pads and the rotors together as a set. And typically, this is just a, just a rule of thumb or a roundabout number an estimate for you. Um, it's usually anywhere between $300 and $400 parts and lever for the for pads and rotors. Is that per or both? That's usually both. Fronts or rears, yeah. Usually both? Yep. Three to four hundred in parts. Uh, parts and labor both. Or three and three to four hundred. Yeah, sometimes it can get up to be about five hundred for you know for everything you know par, uh, pads and rotors, parts and labor installed for the front, and then and then okay. you know another set for for the rear. Okay. Uh, what about the exhaust leak? Well, uh, just, uh, yeah, we don't know. The pipe or something like that. Well, again, if, if the converter needs to be replaced, that's going to be a lot more expensive. Usually, if it's anything, it's hard to explain. If it's anything from um, behind the catalytic converter, we usually charge an hour's worth of labor, plus the parts. Okay. So if the shop's at $100 an hour, it's about $100 labor plus the parts. But if it's the converter or an exhaust manifold, it's a lot more labor. 
because, uh, well, the converter, I shouldn't say the converter is, isn't a lot more labor. It's just the part is, itself is a lot more expensive. But the exhaust manifold, if it's cracked, that's a lot of, that's a lot of labor to pull off the exhaust manifold on this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, catalytic converters were replaced new last year. Okay. All right. So it, it won't be those. It will be probably some kind of a maybe crack in the pipe or crack in a weld somewhere. Okay. Do you think it's before the converter or after the converter? No, it's beyond the beyond. So after the catalytic converter. Okay. So I would think I would think you'd be able to get this replaced, um, you know, for at least, you know, probably minimum two hundred dollars, probably maximum four or five hundred bucks. Go two hundred to four hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, parking brake. So again, I don't know what part needs to be replaced. Generally speaking, let me just look up some parts here on this parking brake. These brakes sometimes they come in different sections. I can't imagine it's going to be any more than two to three hours labor for all of these parts. Would be my guess. Of course, it's hard to say without looking at it. But um, let me just see what it says for the parking brakes. The brake and brake cable. So we got, oh my goodness. So you have, I might want to write this down. All right, so, <laughs> okay, here we go. The front cable, 1.3 hours in labor. The, okay. the rear, both sides, you're looking at 1.8. So about approximately two hours just for the rear is, is, is what my labor time is, labor guide is calling for. Okay. And then the okay. cables. About three hours. Yeah, he would, here's, here's the cables. Um, the good news is they're relatively cheap. You have center, you have a front, you have a rear left inner, rear outer, and then a right rear inner. So there's four different ones, and, and they range anywhere from seventeen no fourteen dollars on the cheap end up to fifty five dollars on the on the expensive end now that's not to say you may not need all of these may not need to be replaced, just only part of them. So mm -hmm. you know anywhere from Two hundred to five hundred dollars again, kind of the kind of the the um, ballpark. Because here's the thing, shops will mark up those parts. So, and of course, who knows where they get these parts from? You know, so there's a lot that factors into the price. But I would say that would be about a rough um, estimate on the on the parking brake stuff. Okay. Okay, got it. Uh, steering control arm. Yeah, let's take a look here. So we got a, con is this part of this, I don't even have a listing for a steering control arm on this thing. There's a control arm, or there's like a steering rack and pinion. Mm. They just gave me control arm and I surmised that it was a steering control arm. If there is no such thing, then it's just the control arm. Okay, so you're going to have a control arm on each side. Let's take a look here. Let me just take a look at the front end here. So as long as it's not the rack and pinion, the rack and pinion would be really expensive to replace. So it's I don't think it's going to be that. That you're probably looking at at least six, seven, eight hundred dollars to get that replaced. But I don't think that's going to be the case here. Here. Um, So there, So is this controlling this is in the front, right? Yes, it's in the front end. All right, so you got an upper and you got a lower control arm on both fronts. So I'm thinking you got four. What are the numbers for each? Four control arms. I think so, yeah, that's what it's looking like here. Yeah. So three hours for the lower control arms on both both fronts. And lower control arms, two hours for both. Lower control arm, three hours. Lower control, two hours. 
Uh, lower is three for both, and the upper is two. Three for both. You got it. Yeah, that's on that. That'll work. Yep. Upper is two for both. Okay. And then. Rough, rough number. What is it? Um. Plus, boy. <clears throat> Let's see here, left, right. Left and the right side. So the part, I'm showing the MSRP is 100, about 173 bucks. Now, again, they're going to mark up that part. So let's just say they get it cheaper than 173, and then they, they mark up the part. I would say 200, 24, boy. Plus the labor, all of this, I would say about $1,000. Mm -hmm. You're saying just about 'm yeah I just want to make sure that what I've been hearing is accurate right okay I think that uh, itemizes it all did you uh, get the assignment on the uh, the repair the sheet metal welding for the pickup bin yeah I see something in here huh? um, metal was I mean, I'm told that the pickup bed is no longer manufactured by Ford based on what they told me and plus the sport model is uh, somewhat of a rarity so that was the other complication to be obstruct dealing directly with the manufacturer right. or a manufacturer's representative to try and find a replacement pickup bed right or pickup box they call it yeah right so, uh, Basically, you know, sheet welding, sheet metal welding, you know, it's a relatively popular practice around Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Okay. So I just told the guy to go ahead and patch it and match the paint as close as possible to Oxford White, and it can be put back on the road. So he says okay. it's done. Oh, wow. Okay. I just, want to make, I just want to make sure that what he's going to charge me for it is correct because on his estimate here he shows me 20 hours to remove it <laughs> i don't think it takes a mechanic 20 hours or half a week to remove eroded parts from a bed that's only what 54 inches wide by mm -hmm. 80 inches long right more or less right seems absurd to me yeah, Very what, large number. I wonder why that is. Yeah, did he did he explain why? At a hundred bucks, it's like two grand. Mm hmm. Did he uh, explain why it was so much? No, he really never did. Uh, but here again, it had a bed liner in it, so he didn't know what he was looking at until that bed liner came up. The bed liner was still in at the time he made the estimates. Okay. So what I'm going to do is see if uh, I can knock it a little bit. I can make it make meet him halfway on the two thousand dollar number, and I'm probably going to be satisfied because you know with the UAW out on strike uh, and no prospect of them going back, I may turn around and put it on the market and unload it. <clears throat> so. I don't have a labor figure for the bed, um, but I'm looking at the removal and replacement procedure. Um, there are, it's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five bolts on top, and a um, few connectors underneath, and it really should pull right up. So I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal, to be honest with you. I can't imagine, you're right, I, I don't think it's gonna be <laughs> that much labor. I didn't I didn't think it was either because I went online and I, I picked up uh, <clears throat> one of these parts marketer, yeah. online marketer, and it showed me a, uh, a bed kit. Well, the bed kit is basically just a rectangular uh, piece of steel, tubular steel, looks right. like to me. <laughs> kind of like, uh, let's say, Uh, they, they call them spars. The brackets are like they hook on or they push in. Sure. And then the it's all bolted in so that everything is tight and it just forms a metal rectangle. 
Right. And it sits on top of the rails. Okay. It doesn't. It doesn't. It does, it's not. It's not bonded into the rails. It sits on top of the rails, and it's bolted down through them. So that's my 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 guess is, and, and that really wasn't that expensive. I think the kit itself was like I don't know, sixty five bucks. Or oh, okay. Like All right. The sixty five, and then the the sheets. The sheets are 41. Okay. Sheet metal. All right. They make those truck bed floor patch panels. Oh, wow. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they come either 65 or 95. Okay. All right. I don't have much experience with that, but that's that's really cool. Yeah, if you can get them down a little bit on well, price. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be that you're more on the mechanical side. Exactly. Than you are on the structural side. Right. You know? And I didn't take it to any body shops to get an eyeball idea about what it is. This guy's like, it's called Rust Repair Incorporated. Okay. And what they do is uh, sell you a package that they'll continue for 10 years to touch up the undercoating condition of the under undercarriage of the vehicle so that it's a little bit more uh, repulsive to salt and corrosion. <laughs> I gotcha. That's a big thing up in western Pennsylvania here. We get, you know, so many inches of snow per year. And the remedy for treatment for traction on roads is rock salt. Okay. And rock salt is a corrosive, and it just continuously eats away at uh, the metal. It oxidizes it faster. So that's what the dilemma is for uh, causing that. Got it. But... Once he got the bed off, he said it's all repairable and it all looks good. And he's got the wall between the uh, the front end of the pickup bed and the cab. And that was pretty well shot because there's a small airspace in between there. And the, the corrosive just kind of goes up through there. Okay. And I don't know, you know, I run a, a, a Tonneau top on my Ranger. It uh, prevents quite a bit of... Uh, environmental impact to the to the bed structure itself mm -hmm. you know the surface so um, I thought maybe you guys could answer that one for me too because he's talking about $4,500 including the oh, wow. uh, radiator support panel oh wow uh, prospect and he, and he really didn't replace the entire panel I got him the stamp panel I think it was like 160 bucks Okay. So what they do, they only they only repair the part that is most affected by the rust. So what he did, he cut that panel in half, long ways, and just used the bottom section of it. Oh. That's where all the rust was wafering off of the uh, the old stamp panel. Okay. So I've got half a panel in there, but it will be new and there will be no corrosion on it at all. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. And for that, he charged a thousand dollars, something like that. Oh, wow. So it was like a thousand thirty-five hundred for uh, the bed, the bed, uh, the bed work, pickup, pickup box. Work. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that's not something that uh, that's not something that, that that's not my forte. But um, you know, it sounds like you're headed in the right direction. Um, you know, you you got your estimate for the brakes. You got the uh, the ball joints. Usually, that stuff is you know they, they do mark up that stuff pretty uh, pretty significantly. But with everything else, with the bed and then and all the stuff, yeah, that's you're talking quite a bit of money that you're going to be putting into this thing. Yeah, I actually bought the thing in eleven five in 2018 okay uh, it's been paid off for about a year or so and now uh, it's going to probably run me another 6500 to get it back on the road right that being said you know sometimes used cars are pretty valuable to people who can't afford a new range <clears throat> right is probably upwards to 40 40 grand right yeah and it's not even a full bed pickup truck of what they're building now. It's it's a short box on the back. Right. They they, they want to make it a quasi passenger vehicle, 
along with a bulk transport vehicle. Oh, I gotcha. You know, I keep my trucks, when I buy trucks or pickup truck, I like standard cabs. I gotcha. Yeah. Room for one passenger, two at the most. Right. And material, you know. Yep. I like the advantage of being able to port material, large amounts of material than might be otherwise sure. realized in the smaller smaller version pickup big truck. Mm-hmm. So, so it's going to be close. It probably won't be too devastating once I get an idea of what uh, the aftermarket is going to be for this particular vehicle inspected and road ready. Right. So, okay. That's my objective. I got point. some. And I appreciate you calling me and telling mm-hmm. me a little bit about it. Because uh, I don't know, I have no way of comparing it because I didn't compare it by taking the same three or four shops. Right. For estimates. Right. I couldn't do that because whenever I got done on the first shop, they said it's really not a good idea to run it very much because two things may happen: you may lose the pickup bed because it's so devastated in holes and rust and weaknesses, uh, and also the radiator. If the, the radiator support bracket on the bottom collapses or breaks, uh, the radiator could become disjointed and dislodged from its connections. Right. That would not be a very pleasant day. No. <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would. <laughs> so, is there anything more you can do for me today? I don't think so. If you have any questions, you can always just reply back online. If you know if, you, if there's something else you want to ask you can you can always reply online and, and i'll be happy to help out okay great thanks for your minute all right and i'll be in touch if uh, there's more to do all right sounds good you bet you're welcome have a good day in san francisco all right thanks a lot you too bye now bye